At his home on the outskirts of Bangkok, British journalist Andrew Drummond contemplates his future. Using Thailand's draconian criminal libel laws and Computer Crime Act, a number of foreign businessmen in the Thai resort of Pattaya are trying to put him behind bars. Week after week, this former correspondent for the London Times and Observer has been exposing foreign criminals in Thailand on his website, and they want him silenced. So far, I've received uh, threatening phone calls. Uh, the school where my children go to has been put on the net. So is my home address, uh, my car registration number. And now they're trying to put me in jail by abusing the Thai libel laws. Drummond says he's undeterred. As an investigative journalist in a career spanning 40 years, he became an undercover Nazi for 18 months in Europe to win an anti-racism award which recognized his courage. He's taken part in many television investigations and was the man who tracked down rock star paedophile Gary Glitter before his arrest in Vietnam. He's filmed in the camps of drug warlords, covered bombings and border wars and has been shot at and mortared on a battlefield. But what he's doing now, at 60, he says is far more dangerous. The problem about Thailand is, is there's always a policeman or an official who will give uh, private information out. Um, so I'm not very secure. Uh, and of course it doesn't cost uh, a lot of money here to hire someone to do some damage. And from this group there's certainly somebody mad enough to do that. Today Drummond exposes the cheats and fraudsters and fugitives who've made Thailand their home, many in the resort city of Pattaya. It's a bit like Amity Island in Jaws. The officials are always chasing the money, they want the tourists in there and they don't really see what's going on, the, on underneath. British journalist Andrew Drummond faces jail in Thailand for libel. All he's doing, he says, is exposing foreign crooks who are giving the country a bad reputation. Well, currently I'm being sued by a man who's been found guilty of fraud in America and who's been the subject of a major newspaper expose there. I'm being sued by a Briton who's been sentenced to jail for six years in Australia uh, for fraud and I'm being sued by a former brothel owner uh, from Melbourne in Australia. Well, they're trying to bleed me dry, and uh, to a certain extent they're, they're succeeding. I, I have to pay a lot of money out in bail and, and legal fees, um, and so it's, it's quite scary, the, the figures involved. Um, luckily, I'm getting tremendous support from uh, supporters on my website who've, who've sent me thousands. So who are these people? The founder of the Pattaya Times newspaper is an American called Drew Walter Noyes. He claims to be an advisor to the mayor of Pattaya. Drummond found, he says, that Noyes was not exactly what he was cracked up to be. When he started writing about him, he immediately received threats. One more chance to do the right thing, then the gloves come off. Your future is in your hands. Believe me. Don't underestimate the favors I have due to me by influential people. If you do not stop stalking me and defaming me, and if you do not immediately remove references to me and my companies, we will have no choice but to talk to influential people tomorrow and ask them to do whatever is necessary for you to stop bothering us once and for all. Hold on for the ride of your life, you pathological liar. Somnam na, asshole. In his own newspaper and addressing an expats club, Noyes claimed he came to Thailand by royal proclamation to advise the Bank of Thailand during the 1990s Asian economic crisis. But Drummond had exposed this as a lie. Well, that was total fantasy on Noyes' part. I mean, he came here to open beer bars and he's still at it. Prior to his departure from the United States, a journalist from the Wilmington Morning Star in North Carolina carried out an investigation which prompted this editorial. The case of Drew Noyes is a reminder that people are not always everything they seem to be. 
As Scott Gold revealed in the Saturday Morning Star, Mr Noyes is being trailed by lawyers, a phony resume and unflattering allegations. Scott Gold, now with the Los Angeles Times, revealed that Noyes had not only cheated on property deals, but he'd been convicted of fraud. He was allegedly a sexual predator, wrote the journalist, citing a case where he allegedly threatened to fire an employee who refused to give him an oral sex service. He had also invented a completely bogus biography with false claims that he had gone to Harvard Graduate School of Business Administration and studied journalism at Duke's University. Among many other claims Noyes made was that he was Director of Operations of the World's Fair in Knoxville, Tennessee in 1982, but later he had to admit in court that it was not true. But he did help out a friend with a stand selling spare ribs. Soon, Drummond, continuing Scott Gold's investigation, was finding Noyes' life in the US was repeating itself in Thailand. Well, he created a bogus uh, biography and advertised on the social media for staff in the Philippines. And he pointed the woman to his biography. Um, several came over. Two, two I've spoken to uh, say they had to flee. One claimed she was sexually assaulted, but both said they weren't, weren't paid the money they were promised and eventually they had to be rescued by their parents. The mass of royal honours he claims for services to Thailand are also bogus, claims Drummond. The rare top royal award he describes here in the Pattaya Times was given after he gathered a crowd of friends and collected 10,000 baht each for an open day at a local army base. Push him! Push him out! Go! Go! <laughs> After this day out, Noyes claimed in his biography he had a certification for skydiving and as a marksman. Noyes had quit the bars and registered a company called Papa. He helped set up an expats club and advertised himself as an American lawyer, which he was not, said Drummond. Nevertheless, soon the money came in from his property and legal advice deals and he used the Pattaya Times to drive business to his office. But seemingly always looking for a new angle, he was also busy buying up some rather odd sex-related internet domains too. Officialblowjobs.info and sextouristapp.com Oral sex, sex tourism, meet Thai university girls, it was all getting a bit unreal. With the cash came the complaints. This 77-year-old Scots pensioner, Joe McCluskey, rushed to him for advice after Noyes published that the Thai government would confiscate property purchased in Thailand in dormant company names. Drew Noyes offered Joe uh, 200,000 baht for a house in Pattaya which was worth at least 10 times that. Uh, but he said, you know, Joe, this will get you out of trouble with the government. Um, and he also told Joe, well, he could stay, stay in it to, until the rest of his life. And Joe was 77 years old. Mr. Noyes sold space above this supermarket to foreigners at special knockdown prices, but he never had the space in the first place. He even sold to foreigners at grossly inflated prices apartments owned by the Thai National Housing Authority and built for less well-off Thais, only stopping when a prosecution was threatened, Drummond reported. Witnesses in that case said that uh, Drew Noyes told them that he had to pay a lot of money corruption money to NHA officials. Introducing OSOS, the one start, one stop investment. Noise ripped off this Thai government video to promote right. former Thai right. Premier Abhisit Bejajiva's one, one start, one, one stop service centre for the Board of Investment. And he put it on his own website to promote his own one stop service centre for foreigners on the go. Noyes' new biography and photo gallery of himself with various dignitaries, including the Prime Minister of Thailand, was at the same time itself attracting attention. An amateur filmmaker set it to music.
but it was when he started having his photograph taken dining with judges of the Pattaya court that Andrew Drummond became more concerned. He held this uh, law seminar for expats in, uh, in Pattaya City Hall and uh, by which time he was getting quite angry with what I was writing and, and he, had, he made an announcement that he was writing a book about law with the chief judge of Chombury and that book would feature the libels of Andrew Drummond. Well, he wrote many stories about me, but in, in the main he was saying I was fleeing. I mean, he, he wrote one story saying I was fleeing my 2000 bar department in Bangkok and heading for Malaysia. In another story he said the Crime Suppression Division were chasing me and were you know, hot on my heels and about to arrest me. Uh, that sort of stuff. Certain people posing as journalists have been writing what appear to be factual accounts of the pasts of some foreigners living in Thailand. But close investigation shows that the reporter, who has no income nor alliance with any press except for a passing stint at the News of the World in England, which is now closed, is now lying to boost his ego and website ranking. However, this has backfired. Closed down! Closed down the site was the order to the colonel in charge of cyber crimes by Crime Suppression Division, Major General Supasan. Well, I went to see the head of the CSD, uh, the general with whom he'd invented an interview, and, and of course he denied it. Eventually it seemed that authorities in Pattaya were finally catching up with noise. He was arrested with his common law wife, one rapper Bunsu. They were accused of attempting to extort the Tonglaw Clinic in Pattaya out of 2.3 million baht on pain of a raid by the Crime Suppression Division and bad publicity in the Pattaya Times. The Australian joint owner, Dr Michael Goulet, pretended to cough up. A noise and his partner were caught in a police sting at this restaurant, but both were bailed for 200,000 Thai baht. What police didn't mention in their press conference was that the man here on the left, posing with Thai generals, was sitting at the table with noise in the news restaurant when police arrived and the sting went down. His Australian David Hanks, who had checked into the Tonglaw Clinic a week before the extortion attempt. He had told the Tonglaw Clinic's owner, Michael Goulet, here pointing at noise, that he ran a sex business in Melbourne and knew the Chinese Mafia. That is similar to what he privately told the journalist when businessman Hanks gave an interview in this financial story in the Age newspaper in Melbourne. Records show that he was the owner of the Masquerades brothel in Melbourne. At least a person of exactly the same name, the same age, the same home address and the same appearance. Despite Drummond's documentation, Hanks has also taken a case of criminal libel against him for describing him as a former pimp. While news of the arrest of Noyes and his wife was carried in the Thai Rat and the Nation newspapers in Bangkok, the story was blocked by several English language newspapers in Pattaya. Drew Noyes later told people it was inconceivable that a publisher of his stature could be guilty of such an offence, but he might have to move town. I think I have one of the more positive publications in Thailand, so how could anybody think that I, they would have to give me money to keep from printing a negative story? It just doesn't make sense not as dramatic as it seems and I think it will pass pretty quickly. It's not exactly the most positive newspaper in Thailand. I mean, Drew Noyes has used the Pattaya Times to attack his enemies frequently. I can remember one case where he in fact attacked uh, a reporter with his own Pattaya Times. Uh, the reporter had, from what I recall, warned an American who was going into business with Drew Noyes not to go into business in a bar with him. Uh, Drew Noyes heard about it. He then exposed him in his own newspaper. He wrote a story saying the reporter was a drug user, uh, he was running an illegal company, and uh, was on overstay. And quite clearly, uh, he reported uh, his overstay to the police because uh, the man was arrested and deported to Brazil. After his arrest, Drummond claims, Noyes went to this man for help, Niels Koloff, a Dane who publishes another newspaper in Pattaya called The Pattaya People. Mr. Koloff soon put the word out that Noyes would be acquitted. And now he has a trouble and now I'm trying to help him in return as much as I can. You know, when we talk about Drew, I believe he will get out of this case. I think, you know, it, 
as many people as possible, you know, uh, putting uh, their efforts together, it, uh, it will help, and he will get out of this case. That is, uh, that is my opinion. And, uh, Niels Koloff is actually also the leader of Patia's foreign police volunteers. He too runs a law and legal advice centre and an expats club. His Patia People media empire blacked out the news of Noy's arrest for extortion. Before arriving in Thailand, as this Danish Supreme Court judgment states, he was convicted of pimping, vandalism and receiving stolen property in Copenhagen, where he was a major figure in the then red light underworld of Vesterbro. In Thailand, he said he'd had a conversion, but it has not convinced everyone. For promoting this deal, Mr. Koloff was given two apartments in lieu of fees to his paper. Paddy People Television, today reporting to you from the Tepesit area. We're here, a new property development company has started. And I'm here with the owner of Harley Quinn Property, Mr. Dave Ames. Britain David Ames is CEO of Harlequin Property which has gone into administration in the UK and is being investigated by Britain's serious fraud office and police, having received £500 million of UK pension money for property projects in the Caribbean which have not been built. With him is Richard Horton, boss of Harlequin Thailand, who later took over the local operation. People lost millions putting cash into houses and condos they never got in Pattaya. Richard Horton sold property deeds to foreigners and then took the deeds uh, to a bank to raise a massive loan. Also, according to Andrew Drummond, this Briton, former millionaire builder Malcolm Leggett, claims he went to the Pattaya people to seek Mr Koloff's advice and lost the three million baht he handed over. Koloff refused to answer his calls. Leggett went to police to complain but of course, at his office, Niels Koloff has a police substation in his front room. This police complaint was not acted upon. After working in a rice paddy just to survive, he went home empty-handed. Well, Malcolm was fleeced. He was, he was totally fleeced. And to such an extent that he didn't have the money to fight. He couldn't take uh, anybody to court. I mean, he ended up working this rice paddy uh, and, and, of course, went home in, in the end. Andrew Drummond also claimed that just like Drew Noyes, Niels Koloff cultivated senior police and civic leaders and influential people. And he seems to be at every party in town. One of Mr. Koloff's triumphs was to sign up local Thai officials to this Philippine nationalist organization, the Knights of Rizal, honoring Philippines' national hero, Jose Rizal. Among the recruits were the mayor of Pattaya, the local Pattaya police chief, and a senior officer of Thailand's equivalent of the FBI, the Department of Special Investigation. He had even, apparently, been awarded the UNESCO Cross. One of the foreigners awarded this great presentation was Mr. Niels Koloff, the CEO of the Party of People Media Group. But Professor that, said Dr. UNESCO, Dyer was a fake Dyer ceremony, which was aired on Patia People Dyer Television. The There's no such Dyer thing Dyer as the UNESCO Dyer Cross, Dyer and, and the UN organization Dyer is not Dyer happy. Dyer this is a fraudulent use of UNESCO's logo and identity, and we will take the necessary action, they announced. Andrew Drummond is currently being sued for libel over this picture, which he took from the website of someone calling himself Mangus Evans. Uh, well, Drew Noyes has already taken me to court over this case, and, and the case was dismissed. Now he's taken another case through his wife. Um, it doesn't look like he can win the case, but he's, then again, he's just trying to make me waste money. Meanwhile, Andrew Drummond went on to target another man with a legal firm who had popped up on the scene. He describes this man, Brian Goody, as a canny Scotsman who'd been swapping notes with noise and also targeted fresh meat, the new foreign arrivals in the city. Goody set up a company in Pattaya called Alba Laws, claiming to be a British barrister and based himself here, the Jaggy Thistle, renamed the Paradise Bar. The Green Beret is everything we train for. He's from Falkirk, Scotland, and claims to have been a captain of Britain's Royal Marines and served in Afghanistan. He occasionally moans about an old shrapnel wound. That's all fantasy, claimed Drummond. 
Brian Goody, when he goes away, will often say, well, I've got to go back to London to represent somebody in the High Court in the Strand or at the Old Bailey. Um, it's a load of rubbish. I mean, he's not a barrister. He's, he's not a lawyer. He's not a captain in the Royal Marines. Um, his, his law degree's fake. I mean, you can't make it up. Well, you can. He has, hasn't he? Huh? Andrew Drummond revealed that Goody was actually born Brian Goldie. He left Scotland over 20 years ago, after which a warrant was issued for his arrest for an alleged fraud on the Royal Bank of Scotland. The warrant was eventually cancelled because the case became too old to prosecute. He went to Australia where he was arrested and sentenced to six years in jail for defrauding a mining company. He served his sentence at Hakia Prison, West Australia. The judge said his trail could be followed on a moonless night. Reinventing himself as Goody and denying he was prisoner number E000274, he passed himself off as a barrister in Hua Hin on the Gulf of Thailand, where he's been representing a Scots developer who built and sold these incomplete houses to foreigners. His job has been to legally threaten the complainers. In one case where the owners were refusing to pay maintenance charges to the Scott developer, he uh, took a woman to the police for uh, illegally mowing the grass and then he called her a prostitute. And on the east side of the Gulf of Thailand in Pattaya, he's been accused of offering release deals for prisoners in the local Nong Plalai jail. One such person was Ulsterman Jimmy Halliday, a notorious drugs trafficker who died from pneumonia after contracting necrotizing fasciitis, a flesh-eating disease, in prison last year. Goody was his legal advisor and had offered to pay his hospital bills at a price. Just before his death, Goody secured the power of attorney of Halliday, and that's how he acquired Halliday's apartment and the Jaggy Thistle. Halliday's hospital bill was a million baht. The value of the Jaggy Thistle alone is 12 million baht. That's uh, over a quarter of a million pounds. This man, American Gregory Miller, a school teacher arrested on child sexual abuse charges, was one of Goody's clients. A case at the Pattaya Provincial Court at the moment alleges that Goody cheated 300,000 US dollars from Miller's 75 year old mother for his release. Well, people have been known to slip out of Thai prisons uh, for a price. So it wasn't too difficult to convince prisoners in Nong Plalai that uh, he could do it for them. Uh, but he was being monitored by the police and, you know, he failed, but he got the money. When Goody is confronted, reported Drummond, he also uses the criminal libel law to keep his detractors at bay. Britain Andy Matthews lent him 443,000 baht, about $15,000, when he thought he was a friend. Goody never repaid him, and when Matthews heard about Goody's dubious background, he went to demand it back. Now Matthews is the man in the dock. Um, I loaned him money in return. He, he promised to return the money, 100,000, at the end of every month, and he didn't. Uh, he told me that he was a barrister from the UK. Um, he told me that he was a, uh, a captain in the Royal Marines, and that he was a martial artist. He's, he's suing me for defamation of character and um, aggravated trespass, which I'm not guilty of. I just went to, to ask for the return of the money that I can't be known to. Mr. Goody's activities have featured heavily in the Scottish press in stories written by Andrew Drummond. Now Goody has also joined the list of people trying to get journalist Drummond sent to jail. He's suing in Thailand for this story published by the Scottish Sunday Mail. Well, I can't say I didn't see that one coming. And Brian Goody thinks he's a lawyer. He actually believes it. He's actually suing me for something which uh, was printed in uh, a Sunday newspaper in Scotland. So I'm not quite sure how that's going to go down here in Thailand. Sean Crispin, senior Southeast Asia representative for the New York-based Committee to Protect Journalists, has issued the following statement on Andrew Drummond's cases. CPJ has long condemned the use of criminal libel and defamation laws to stifle media criticism in Thailand. These laws, including the Associated Computer Crime Act outrageously allow for imprisonment for mere news reporting and have engendered a climate of fear and self-censorship across Thailand's media.
We stand beside reporter Andrew Drummond, whose investigative journalism is renowned for shining uncomfortable light in some of Thailand's darkest places. We strongly support his right to report without fear of reprisal and categorically condemn the threat of imprisonment he now faces. Meanwhile, we asked Andrew Drummond why he continues challenging these people. Well, I think it's uh, leopard and spots, you know. I'm a journalist. Uh, I've been in doing investigations most of my career. And uh, that's what I think I'm good at. Um, there's no money in it, never has been. But, you know, the rewards uh, come in different ways. You know, it's good to hold your head up high sometime. Drew Noyes and one rapper Bunsu not only face a charge of extortion, they've now been ordered to face a charge of defrauding this Dutchman out of nearly 3 million baht, or 65,000 US dollars. Theo van der Schaaf claims they pocketed cash he'd sent to pay off his Thai girlfriend for the return of his home. For those who wish to report crimes in Thailand, don't report them to this site, askthailandpolice.com. It's been set up by Drew Noyes through his one-stop legal centre. No police force in the world outsources crime reporting. Niels Koloff insists he'll cherish his UNESCO cross and continues to lead the Patia police volunteers. David Hanks still insists he's a respectable businessman in Patia and shares a company with Drew Noy's wife and says it's totally coincidental that he has the same names, date of birth, home address and appearance as a Melbourne brothel owner. He can, however, be seen regularly directing startup operations for this gentleman's club in Patia. Brian Goody, or Goldie, is facing two charges of fraud in Patia court and continues to play the lawyer. He's currently representing in court two Britons who believe he'll get back the condos they were swindled out of.